and 365 Sports by Carolina Panthers head coach, former Baylor and Temple head coach Matt Rule. Did you ever have, thank you very much, by the way, for being a part of the show. We know that uh, it's great to have you on. Did you ever have any true feuds with a coach throughout your career at all? Uh, you know, I've had some uh, heated disagreements <laughs> at times. Uh, and, uh, you know, some, some guys I didn't necessarily see eye to eye with, but I uh, never, you know, never anything in public, you know, I tried to try to always make sure that those things stayed, you know, behind closed doors. Uh, what are your thoughts as a former head coach in college of what you hear or see if you have time to even pay much attention to NIL? You know, um, I, I, I don't have much time. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I've got a bunch of buddies coaching though. So, you know, kind of hearing from them, you know, Will Healy, the head coach at UNC Charlotte was over at practice the other day. Um, you know, Marcus Satterfield, who's with us at, at Baylor, who's now the OC at uh, South Carolina, was over at practice. I talked to Joey McGuire a good bit. So I, I've had, you know, differing perspectives from differing guys. And, you know, I think it's like anything else in, in the world. Like, you know, there's a, it's, there's a lot of great things about it. And when put in, in the wrong hands or done the wrong way, um, there, there, there are going to be issues with it. So um, I certainly hope for the good of college football that um, – that it's 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 done the right way so that you know young people can benefit they can uh, benefit from the things that they do but at the same time it's not abused. What is the relief versus a uh, new stress factor of not being a college coach and being an NFL coach now going into your your third season? Well, well, well the stress factor here is I mean I mean you change over fifty percent of your team I guess that's kind of becoming college football you know mm -hmm. so you know you have a whole new team to get to know every single year. Um, you know, I, the, the part of the pro football that I struggle with is just is just the cutting of players, letting go of players. You know, because of the business aspect of the game, sometimes that guy is gone. You know, in a moment's notice, and so that part's really hard. You know, for a guy like me that loves the relationships and that part of the game. Um, but I, it sounds like you know, college football is kind of becoming that too. So um, I, I think uh, I think uh, you know the rest of this. You know, we've got good guys. We've got guys who who they've made it to this point in their careers because, uh, you know, they're 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 professionals. I don't deal with many problems. I've got a, I've got a great team full, you know, and a great roster full of guys. Well, coach, it's good to hear your voice. I remember, you know, hearing you early on in your Baylor tenure, talking about we're going to get guys in this program. We're going to, you know. You know, make them good young men on and off the field, and, and we're going to eventually send some guys to the pros. And just a few weeks ago, uh, Baylor football set a record for number of draft picks uh, with six. And, and you know these guys very well, Jalen Petrie, uh, Tyquan Thornton, JT Woods, Terrell Bernard, Treston Ebner, Kalen Barnes, who, of course, you drafted to the Panthers in the later rounds. What was it like for you? I know you were very busy, but what was it like to see those young men's dreams come true? Well, first of all, for them, I was excited. You know, I had a chance to – I had a chance to call or FaceTime. All. In fact, I called uh, Taekwon like not soon thereafter he got drafted. And then I was on the phone with Coach Belichick when he called back because we were executing a trade. And it was either Coach Belichick for the trade or Taekwon. And I, I chose Coach Belichick, unfortunately, for uh, my, <laughs> my chance to talk to Taekwon. But I was, I was so happy and proud of those guys. And, um, you know, I think the one thing, though, that I did say when I first got there was it's not really about how many guys get drafted. It's about how many guys last three, four, five, six, seven years. And you hope that the things that they learned when we were there, certainly the things that they've learned under Coach Aranda and his staff. Um, you know, you hope that these guys know what it means to be a, a true professional. Um, and, I, you know, you know, we can see that in Kalen already. You know, we have John Lovett here as an undrafted free agent. Uh, you can see that in him. You know, every time I turn the TV on, I see Jermichael Hasty. I mean, he's the living embodiment of what it means to be a true pro. So I was proud of those guys, uh, just like I was when I watched them win the Big 12 championship and the Sugar Bowl. But, uh, knowing what a lot of those guys went through to get to that, you know, it was really gratifying. There was a time when you said what Craig mentioned, but also, Matt, uh, that uh, you mentioned the process. And, of course, the first year didn't go very well, and a lot of people questioned that. You never stopped believing in that. Is that the same thing right now of what you're teaching or trying to, to get done at Carolina? Yeah, it, it's the same exact thing. I think that the difference here is that, you know, we started to have success in the second year, much like we did at, at, at Baylor, you know, we had some ups and downs. We were at five and five. You know, we had a huge win on the road at Arizona. Um, and then, you know, just hit a skid at the end of the year. Uh, got a bunch of guys hurt. And, you know, I, I didn't do a good enough job of getting us out of it. And so, you know, we didn't finish with the results in year two that we did, 
you know, uh, at Baylor when we won that Texas Tech game and went to the bowl game and then won the bowl game. So, uh, you know, I, I certainly understand that there can be skepticism about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I like our roster. I like the guys we've drafted. I've, I like the development. You know, I think uh, some of the coaches that we've brought in from other places, you know, the comments they've made to me about how impressed they are with the way that our guys work, with the way that our guys learn football, with their willingness to do whatever's asked of them, with their willingness to, you know, to police the locker room themselves. And, um, you know, it, it's a really good culture. It's a lot of good things. It just, you know, it's like anything else, Smoke, it just hasn't, uh, you know, materialized on the field to the level that we all want. So and we've got to get that done just like we did at Baylor. And uh, that, that's, um, that's what I believe in. I think, I think it will happen. Uh, obviously, you know, the hardest thing to find is is your quarterback, and you, you've gone through a couple of different things, and part of it was, like you said, injuries. You drafted one in Matt Corral this year. Do you feel, though, that you've built up the team now with the draft around him, especially addressing the offensive line like you have, that, that you might have a little more um, of a bubble for the quarterback to grow and get better, whoever that may be, whether it continues to be Sam Darnold or if it's Matt Corral down the road? I think all I think all quarterbacks that you know they need they need talent around them to get open and make plays. Um, you know they need a, a really quarterback friendly system, but most importantly they need an offensive line that plays at a high level. And um, you know I think if you went in the room and asked Taylor Moten, who's kind of the you know the leader of our offensive line, he would say we didn't play well enough up front. So it, it would be hard for anybody to, to 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 play well with the way that you know we we sometimes got overmatched um, you know on the offensive line, and so. Uh, you know, I understand. Sam understands the quarterback takes the brunt of that. You know, our our approach since being here is let's build the team and let's take let's take let's take every shot we can at every quarterback we can until we find a guy that can take us all the way. And so uh, we built a good defense. I think that defense has a chance to be strong again this year. We've got good skill people. Uh, we're you know Christian McCaffrey is, is is full speed and healthy. And now we think our offensive line is actually a position of strength for us. So uh, we've done everything we can to make sure that. Our quarterbacks uh, have everything they need to be successful. Matt, when you're in the draft, and you mentioned uh, you were on the phone with Belichick and obviously Taekwon, you drafted Kalen Barnes. But when you're during the draft and you see a, play, a need and a player that's there that's right next to another prospect, but it's a Baylor player that's also in the mix, how do you separate or is it difficult to separate emotions of knowing that, that player from Baylor as well as you do? Well, you know, I think it's just familiarity, and sometimes it's familiarity with playing against guys. But you know, there's a negative, you know, to, to bringing in guys that you that you know from college because you know, you know, eventually at some point you might have to let them go, and that's hard too. So, um, you know, even when it came down to Kalen at the end, you know, uh, me and Scott talked about it, and I I told Scott, you know, we had another guy on the board that we really liked, and I said, you know, hey, hey, you make the call. Do we want to go corner? Do we want to go the other position? And I think in the end, you know, Kalen's speed went out, so. Um, I've got a great situation with our GM, Scott. You know, he, he and I are, are really close friends, but we also see the game similarly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of guys, uh, uh, you know, obviously a Baylor guy to me. Um, I have a relationship with them. I know the good, the bad. I know all those things about them. But as, as seen in the draft, you know, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people uh, recognize what, you know, what those Baylor kids uh, can do. And so uh, as they have success, it makes it, you know, easier and easier to – for me in our draft room to say, hey, this kid's uh, this kid's a winner. I, I know that you uh, you've had the chance to to go down and 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 drown a few minnows with uh, with Jimmy Johnson. He did that a little bit with the Cowboys early on. Where, but he you know was it just about kind of picking your spots where you you get those guys who know you um, to help build the foundation? Well, I think it's partially that, and I think part part of it too, um, you know, was. Um, uh, when those guys had other opportunities, you know, like whether it was Clay Johnson last year, like, you know, he, he got drafted by the Rams. He had a chance to be on the Rams. Um, but when guys, whether it's PJ Walker from Temple or Robbie Anderson coming out of, you know, from Temple to the Jets or him, when they've had a chance to go somewhere, they've had multiple offers. Those guys have all chosen to come here with us because they trust Bill Snow. They trust me. Uh, you know, Hassan Reddick came here last year on a one year prove it and, you know, went out and made $15 million. Matt Ioannidis this year took less, you know, or, or right about the same to come with us um, because he trusted us. And so I think part of that is the way that we, you know, hopefully tried to do business, you know, with the guys in college. And, um, you know, that first year Paul was so hard because uh, there was no, there were no pro days. There were no real, real opportunities to, to see a lot of guys. So if there was a guy that we felt like, hey, he's a diamond in the rough, let's go get him. And that might be a, a kid that played for us at Baylor, but it was also a guy like Miles Hartsfield from Ole Miss who we remembered, you know, recruiting in high school. So, 
uh, those things extend those things extend both ways. And uh, you know, having a guy like Evan Cooper, you know, on our staff, I mean, uh, he, he he remembers the kids what they did in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. So he's 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 invaluable for me. Matt, you mentioned the general manager and your relationship with Scott and friendship as well, and also the professional relationship. Is in the NFL owner, GM, head coach, as imperative like a straight line, like a spine, so to speak, perfectly aligned spine like it is president, AD, and football coach in college? I mean, it should be. It better be. You know, um, it's funny. When I when I left Temple, the reason why I went to Baylor, you know, I – I often talk about like, hey, I felt very called to be there in the mission of Baylor and feeling like I was uniquely, you know, um, uniquely uh, uh, ordained to step into that role someday. But the other half of it was was Mac Rhodes. You know, um, in the end, when you're going to move your family, you you, you want to have us, you want to have this elite partnership. And I felt like I had that elite partnership at Temple with Pat Kraft, who's now the AD of Penn State, and I knew I would have that with Mac. And so coming here, you know, I, I, I felt like I would have that with our owner, David Tepper. And when we had a chance to hire Scott, um, it, it, it felt the same way. So, you know, we, we can disagree. We can see things differently. But in the end, we're always aligned. And that's whether that's Mr. Tepper, whether that's Scott, whether that's me, um, you know, we are always you know, trying to make the best decision to move, move this team forward, to be a playoff team, to be a Super Bowl team. So, Coach, I pulled up an old tweet from August 15th of 2017, and it just simply says, Rule says walk-on safety Jerem McVay is probably as talented as any scholarship player we have. So that was 2017. Fast forward to December 4th, 2021, and Jerem McVay is making one of the greatest plays in Baylor football history to win a Big 12 championship. Were you able to watch live, and and as you were, or whenever you watched it, however you caught it, what were your thoughts uh, about just the dramatics and and the moment that that was for Baylor football beating Oklahoma State? Oh, I mean, I, I bawled. I mean, I sat on I sat on my uh, I sat on my couch and screamed and yelled, and 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 so did Julie. I mean, we you know we love those kids, and we, and we love Waco, and we love Baylor, and um, you know, so we uh, we 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 were we were uh, ecstatic and really fitting. For it to be McVeigh making that play, you know, I, I used to yell at Jaron all the time for tackling low in practice, you know, and dive. You know, I'd always say you're going to get someone hurt, and then he makes this low tackle, which was awesome, and, and, he, and he makes the play with tremendous effort. And that's, I think, that's a cre- that's a credit to Dave, that's a credit to Ron Roberts and the way that they played defense there. So, you know, I was I was uh, I was ecstatic, and uh, you know, it, 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 obviously that, that was a hard year for me, you know, at the end of the year, and and you know, us losing the way that we did, and. Uh, that was that was really like a shining moment, and then uh, you know to take it even a step further, you know I remember after the game, not long after, uh, Petey and Terrell uh, uh, FaceTimed me, and it's amazing how uh, encouraging words from people that you care about can go a long way, and uh, you know I that that was a really special day for for Baylor, and uh, uh, just watching that gave a little something back to me too. Coach, they say that when you your first year to your second year, you kind of learn more of what you're not ever going to do again than what you're going to do in the future. Probably a weakness. Like I spend the first year just kind of, you know, seeing, seeing, um, trying to figure out, hey, what does it take to win here? And then the second year, you know, um, really starting to implement that. Guys starting to buy into it, starting to understand it. And then really year three, I think it's the year, whether it was Temple or it was Baylor, Baylor where everyone's kind of on the same page. You can turn the you can turn the day-to-day stuff over to the team. Um, they understand how we want to practice. They understand how we want to play. We start to see each other a little bit differently, and and I think that's you know that's um, that's hopefully what happens here. You know, like you know, I I, uh, I have a great veteran group of guys that have been with me. That you know, I mean, they, they know my weaknesses. They know my strengths. I know who they are, and I don't have to be involved in every little thing. You know, I can trust Christian McCaffrey and Shaq Thompson and. Jeremy Chin and you know many 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 more. I can trust those guys to 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 make sure that our locker room is moving in one direction, and that's um that's that's probably you know that's probably what was special about the teams that we had at Baylor was you know the Terrell Bernards of the world, the uh, Chris Millers, all those guys. They they kept our team moving forward in one direction, and and um it, you need that in the NFL because these, these guys are. They're they're not just men. They're they're not just grown men. They're also great men, and they've they've got a lot going on in their lives. And if they believe in what we're doing, um, they move forward. So I I feel like this is a year a great year for me to make a step as the head coach and turn some things over to the guys and let them uh, let them lead the way. 
Matt, is there any similarities of what you probably need to get done this year with Carolina to what you felt like after one and eleven? Um, you know, um, it, I probably feel like we did after year two in a lot of ways. Like I, I never forget we went on a senior retreat, and I remember uh, Jim Michael. I can't quote exactly how he said it, but <laughs> I remember him. You know, I remember him saying like basically like you know we're going to play grown man football. Like we're not jumping off sides. We're not. We're not, we're not, you know, making mistakes. We're not beating ourselves. We're gonna play fast. We're gonna play hard. I mean, he really set the standard. And you know, you know, you know, a couple sentences from Jamichael had way more impact than anything any team meeting that I could ever do. And um, I think that's what's happened happened at our place. You know, we've been together enough now that that we understand that you know what if, if we don't turn the ball over and 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 you know we were second in the NFL in defense last year. If we don't turn the ball over. We play smart football. We play disciplined football. You know, we don't beat ourselves. We've got enough good players that we can win a lot of games. And so, um, you know, I, I felt like we were making progress last year until we hit that skid. You know, we've got to do a good job of staying healthy in this league. But more important than anything else, you know, we just we just have to protect the football and just play the type of football that we all know we're capable of. And uh, I, I like I like our coaching staff. I like where they are. I, I feel like uh, we're poised to do that. Did Julie or any of the other members of the Rule family get to make a draft pick this year? <laughs> no, they, <laughs> they weren't. Uh, they, they, they weren't quite as uh, involved this year. Um, <laughs> no, uh, they. Uh, they. Well, uh, I mean, they. Uh, she, but, uh, she, uh, she made a great call on Chuba. So yeah, yeah. or Chuba. That's sorry. right. No, yeah, she. Yeah, no, yeah, she. Uh, she, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think they were home rooting for the uh, rooting for the Baylor, rooting for the uh, the the Owls and the and the and the and the Bears, but also rooting for the Carolina Panthers. So we uh, we didn't have quite as many picks this year. So you know they, they would I'd, I'd have to text them when we made the trade, like, hey, we got a pick. You know, I don't know what you're watching, the Real Housewives or whatever, but you know, <laughs> kick it over to our game, our, our channel. Matt, why don't you take jobs that are already stable? Uh, you know, my, 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 uh, my, my agent said that to me at one point, um, <laughs> you know, I don't think there's any job. I don't think there's any job in the NFL that, you know, I mean, I think every job in the NFL is in flux because the rosters are so much in flux, but you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, every, every, every decision we've made, we've made for, we've made for multiple reasons, you know, like, you know, Hey, this is a job where we think we can have an impact, but also, you know, I, I have kids, man. I've got a 17 year old, a nine year old, a six year old. I'll, I'll spend this weekend at dance recitals. I mean, We've also made them based upon, hey, where do we want to live and who do we want to be around? So, um, you know, but I can say this, you know, watching what uh, Coach Aranda has done, watching what those guys have done. I, uh, Coop showed me a list the other day where Khalil Keith um, was ranked as one of the top tackles in the, you know, the NFL draft next year, Connor Galvin. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I remember going to the small town in Alabama to, to, to see Khalil Keith. I mean, those things, those things are, you know, those things are special, special things. So, I wouldn't trade any decision that we've made for anything. How much uh, did you have many conversations or did you know Dave Aranda before you left for the NFL and he took the job at Baylor? No, I, I didn't. I did not know Dave. I think maybe Phil had, had you know, knew him. Uh, Phil Snow had known him, but I, I, I did not know Coach Aranda at all. Um, in fact, when he was announced, as, as, you know, as, as the head coach, it was the first time the first time that I had ever known that, but you know, we've had a chance to talk and visit a couple different times and saw each other at a, a at a conference one time. So I have, you know, the utmost respect for him. Uh, one more thing, Joey McGuire is at Texas tech, obviously part of your staff. And that was just a matter of time, whether you were still at Baylor or not, your thoughts about how much he leaned on you during that time when that job became open. Uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I think Joey's just got, he's got, uh, he's got something special about him. You know, I mean, I think he's one in a million. Um, I think he has the natural gift to, to lead people. Um, and I think he cares deeply about people, no, no matter what they can do for them. And I think a lot of people care about their players as long as their players can, can benefit them. But Joey's, Joey's a guy who loves, loves his guys. You know, I was, I went out, I was, you know, honored to be invited to come out and speak at his clinic. Um, I watched them practice. I saw this, you know, the, 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 saw him sowing the seeds of what they're trying to build there. And um, like I said, I think Joey McGuire's uh, one of the best coaches I've ever been around. You know, I I asked him twice to come to the NFL with me. You know, his son Garrett with me doing a great job. But when I left the first time and when the second time, you know, when he when he took the Texas Tech job, I was or the year before he took the Texas Tech job, I I tried to convince him to come coach with me because he'd be a great NFL coach. But 
Um, I think he'll do a great job there. Uh, you know, he, he's got relationships throughout the state. And uh, now I have uh, two Big 12 teams that I can root for. Matt, one more thing. Uh, did you ever forgive me for bringing up the, the fact you had a monster drink in your office that one day? <laughs> I think Julie's given up <laughs> on me by now. <laughs> oh, so, those, those, those things are uh, those, those things are those things are far. You know, those things are just distant memories. Uh, you've done you've done far more good for me than than anyone ever could hope for. So oh, I appreciate. You. Yeah, I, uh, Paul, remember that? Yeah. I I remember it vividly. It's one of my favorite press conferences I've ever been to. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mo. Yeah. Appreciate it, <laughs> Matt. One more. <laughs> one, do you sleep differently as an NFL coach? Compared to being a college head coach, is there any difference at all in your life as far as how you live your life? Oh yeah, I mean, I come home, I put my phone away. I don't. I mean, I'm not on my phone. I'm not. You know, when we were at Baylor, when we were at Temple, you know, our, our my phone was on uh, with the ringer on every night. Julie's phone was on with the ringer on every night. You know, we were there for those kids 24 seven. You know, in case something happened. You know, um, something at home, something in the dorm, something academically. So. You know, and part of that I love. Part of, part of that, you know, the maturation process and development I love. But when I come home now, I'm just daddy. You know, there's not a lot of work calls at night. You know, um, uh, it's it's ju it's just a different life. The season's a little bit longer. There's obviously a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. But uh, it's really kind of all football, all scouting. And and uh, once you get home, there's there's no uh, there's no transfer portal. There's no recruiting. There's no you know there's nothing other than just uh, the next day's practice. Coach, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, uh, a guy that we got to know a little bit while he was on campus here in Waco, uh, although he couldn't go fully the way that he wanted to, was uh, Coach George DeLeon, who unfortunately passed away uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, I know he had a, a big impact on your life, but can you just speak to that impact and, and speak to uh, the man that he was and, uh, you know, not just football, but just the man that he was? Well, and I appreciate you, appreciate you bringing uh, George up, and um uh, you know, we, we played Miami and he came, he came over, drove across the state with his lovely wife, Barbara, and they, they came to the hotel and it was, it was interesting. It was like between guys who had played for him in the NFL, the, the Baylor guys, anybody from Temple, all the coaches, coaches that have coached for the other places. I think there were like 40 people uh, there to see George. And uh, the next day he woke up, you know, he didn't feel great, couldn't go to the game, but um, you know, that, that's what he was. He was, he was a developer he was a teacher. There's probably a bunch of little kids in Central Texas who, you know, got yelled at with by a bullhorn with them at the at the <laughs> Baylor youth camp when we had it. I mean, he coached everybody like they were going to the NFL because he loved everybody and cared about everybody. And uh, like I said, when I see guys like Connor Galvin and Khalil Keith, you know, um, having success on and off the field, you know, that that's part of George's legacy. So uh, it was, you know, I went I went up to the funeral with Bryant and. Um, Honor, there's no other way to honor George than with food. We got a bunch of pizzas from the legendary places up there in New Haven, where he's from. And on the back of the program, they had they had uh, uh, his favorite pasta, and Ed Foley posted it on Twitter. And not thereafter, not not too soon thereafter, I saw Blake Blackmar, another guy I'm really proud of, uh, uh, make it. And I, I just think that's that's what George Dillion was. He was a guy who connected people. He connected people through football. Connected people through. Uh, food. He connected people through relations. Really, really, just through love. He was a wonderful man. I, I really miss him. Matt, we appreciate you. I know that there's a lot going on. Uh, I, I know that mini camp, uh, rookie mini camp, is over, and then you got to start cranking it up here pretty soon. We appreciate you joining us on the show and access that we get from you all of the time. Wish you the very best of luck. Thank you, guys. Matt Rule, Carolina Panthers head football coach on Sikkim three sixty 